In this video, we're going to use Illustrator and Photoshop to make a simple animation. Now, before we begin, it's worth noting that there's plenty of programs that do animations way better than the way I'm going to show you today. But for really simple, quick, and easy animations, using Illustrator and Photoshop is a really cool way. And if you don't have those other programs, you can get by with just these two. We're going to create a new document. We're going to go to the web and create a very quick 300 by 300 pixel page like this. Now, of course, you can make it any size you want to. For my purposes, 300 is absolutely fine. Now, we're going to learn a couple of keyboard shortcuts which are really useful. Before we begin, Illustrator's got a really cool feature where you can take your page, which Illustrator calls an artboard, and we can duplicate, multiply, as many as we want. It's almost limitless, which is what we're going to use to create our animation. For the purposes of our animation, we're very simply just going to take a shape, like a circle. We'll draw the circle. I'll press Shift on my keyboard to keep it proportional. Let's take the stroke away, and let's put a fill of a dark orange in there. What we're going to do is, once we've clicked the black arrow, we'll just move it to the center in the middle and to the left-hand side over there. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a really simple animation where we animate the ball going from left to right and back to left again. We won't use so many frames, and that will save time in this video. But of course, if you're making a much more detailed animation, use more artboards, more frames to make the animation smoother. So the routine goes something like this. I've got my first frame set up, so that's the ball on the left-hand side. On the keyboard, I'm going to press Shift and O, and that puts us into artboard mode, which means that we can now see all of our artboards, all of our pages. I'm going to click Alt on my keyboard, keep it clicked, and click and drag a new artboard out like that. I'm now going to click the black arrow, and remember the keyboard shortcut for that is V. I'm going to click on my shape and pressing shift on my keyboard and using my right arrow key, I'm just going to go one, two, three, like so. I'm going to press shift O on my keyboard, alt, drag to copy to duplicate that, press V on my keyboard, click on the circle, press shift on my keyboard. Now shift has the effect of making my left and right movements bigger. So if I was to just press the left and right, you can see that the movement is very small. If I press shift and right, one, two, three, you can see that my ball moves a lot faster. Now what I'll do is I'll just continue that routine, which is shift and O, alt and drag, V on my keyboard, click on the circle, one, two, three. Now I'll switch the camera off here, and when you come back, I'll have made all of my frames. Now, in the meantime, what I've done is basically made 11 copies of this artboard. And every time I've moved this little circle, the ball, to the right, when it got to the edge, that's the one that my mouse is on now, I basically reversed the animation. So I bounced the ball going back towards the left. Now, an important thing is my last frame. So the way we're going to do this, especially if you're following the numbers, is the animation is going to start here, move along this. And when it gets to here, that's going to be the very next frame. That's copy number six. And then the ball is now traveling back towards the left. And this last frame, that's frame 11, is going to be the one before frame number one starts the animation again. So I don't want to end the animation with artboard one again, because what that would do is, in the animation, it would cause a little glitch. Now, what we're going to do with these 12 pictures is we're going to export them. So we'll go to export as. I'm going to just put them on my desktop for now, but I'm going to put them in a new folder. I'm going to call that animation like this. The name of the animation is not important, but we'll call it ball. And now the most important thing is we must go over here where it says artboards. So we are going to use artboards and we're going to say all. We're going to press export. It's now asking us what kind of settings do we want. For now, I'm not really concerned. Uh, we can make it transparent if we wish. At this moment, it doesn't bother me either. We'll press OK to that. And very quickly, it's exported all 12. Now, as you can see, 
I've opened up the animation folder and here we have our 12 pictures and Illustrator is really good because it names the pictures that it saved or it's export as a sequence, one, two, three, four, all the way up to 12. This is going to be really useful in Photoshop. So let's open up Photoshop. Now we've got Photoshop open. It's a very simple case of opening up all 12 of our pictures. So we'll go to File and Open and we're going to navigate to that folder on my desktop called Animation. And here it is. I've got my animation folder open. I'm going to click on the first picture. That's ball 01. So that was the first picture I exported. Now, if you're using a Mac, you might have to click on Options. If you're on Windows, I think it's already there. What we want to do is we want to tell Photoshop that this isn't just one picture we're opening, but in fact, it's a sequence. That means a number of pictures that are all joined together in some way. And that's an image sequence. We're going to press Open. And Photoshop will then ask us what's the frame rate. Well, for an animation on a computer, 10 frames per second is absolutely fine. We'll press OK to that. And what Photoshop will do is it will just load up the first picture and then kind of our 11 other pictures are not there in front of us. So what we have to do is go to Window, we go to Workspace, and this time we choose the Motion setting there. What that will do is it'll open up in Photoshop a kind of a movie editor, if you will. Let me just zoom out a little bit there so you can see the effect of that. Now what we've got here is almost like if you've used one of those video editors, we've got a timeline. If I was to press play now, you can see that my animation plays and it's actually pretty okay. If I go to that gear symbol over there, I will say loop playback. Now I'll press play and you can see that my animation is running quite smoothly. Now for me, 10 frames a second is absolutely fine. I don't need much more movement than that. But if you find that you need to make a smoother animation, you might need to find a bigger number like 15, 25, 30. But be warned, the more frames you have, the faster the animation will play. And that means in Illustrator, you're going to have to create way more frames for smooth animation to work. Let's get this into an animated form. So this would be kind of like a small icon on a web page or something like that. We're going to go to File. We'll go to our Export. And this time we want to do a legacy. That means an old version of Export. So we're going to save for the web. If we click on that, we can see that we've got a huge panel up here. So it's a bit confusing, but don't get too overwhelmed by this. We want to go and save it as a GIF or a GIF, depending on how you pronounce that. So we want to select that there. The rest of the settings aren't really so important. If you need it to be transparent, make sure you've clicked that transparency button. If not, don't worry about it. Let's have a look at any other settings that we want. We should be OK. If we just do a preview, Photoshop will kind of generate and show you. Now you can see this is quite a big animation, a bit bigger than I wanted it to be. So let's close down that window. Let's go back here and look at our settings. And yes, you can see the settings there. From my 300 to 300, it's managed to make it absolutely massive, uh, 1250. It's got something to do with the resolution settings I had. So what I'll do here is just go back and change that to 300 by 300. Let's preview that, have a look at it. And you can see there's some details for web designers over here. It's not such a big concern of mine. But that animation for me is absolutely perfect. And what we'll do over here now is save that as a file. Make sure we go to a folder that we want. In this case, it's my animation folder. Let's just save that as ball.gif. Images only, that's fine. And we'll press save like this. If we now navigate to the folder, you can see I've got my original 12 from Illustrator and my new animated GIF that's sitting in this folder. If I just preview that, you can see it works. It's transparent, so you don't see a background. And that can be put into any web page or an application that you need it to be.